the mystery of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370. One of the largest and safest passenger jets ever made simply disappears off the radar. Was it terrorism or a suicidal pilot? Did its crew and passengers perish on board, turning it into a ghost flight that flew unmanned into a vast, untraceable ocean and, finally, oblivion? Nothing about the flight makes sense and nothing will bring comfort to those whose loved ones boarded that doomed aircraft in Kuala Lumpur three weeks ago. Hey. At first appearances, this is as normal a family setting as you'll get. Except that one member of the Weeks family is missing. Paul, father to three-year-old Lincoln and 11-month-old Jack, husband to Danica. We did everything together as a family. And when you look in your children's eyes, and I feel the pain, because I know the man Paul was, and I know the enormity of what they're going to miss out on for the rest of their lives, that that is so overwhelming for me that when I look at Lincoln, I have to tell him his dad is gone. Do you think you can tell them before you have the answer? I think I have to, because you've got to tell the kids the truth. But Lincoln, even this morning, he was having a meltdown and, and he's, I'm missing daddy, I'm missing daddy. And when's daddy coming home? Um, is daddy still missing? Yeah, yeah did you show us that card? While Danica wrestles with the pain for her young family in Perth, across the country in Brisbane, Amanda Lawton is dealing with the loss of her parents, Robert and Kathy. I feel so grateful that I've had 27 years with my mum and dad. Um, good years. Mum was my best friend. These are two families at different stages in life from opposite sides of the country. As strangers across the world are united in sorrow and in anger over the fate of Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. We may never know what happened to this aeroplane. To the world, it is the greatest of aviation mysteries. The great unsolved crime of the 20th century was who shot JFK. This is going to be the great unsolved crime of the 21st century. To the families of six Australians on board MH370, it is unbearable. But to know that they had actually flown straight past us. So close to home. So close. Yeah. And I, I would have been out in the shops at the time. I've, I've thought this through. I was in Perth, merrily going along our family way whilst he was crashing into the ocean. We've got a routine takeoff not long after midnight. David Learmount is one of the world's most respected aviation safety experts. This flight takes off at that time every single day. Everything about this flight is routine. It's just another flight. Flight 370 is level at 35,000 feet, cruising out of Malaysian airspace, heading towards Vietnam. On board are 12 crew and 227 passengers. One is Paul Weeks, flying out to Mongolia to take up his new job as a mining engineer. This is a dream job. I'll never stop him from doing, you know, his dream job and, and following his dreams. This young family had already been through a lot. Oh, my God! They'd survived the Christchurch earthquake of 2011, settling in the relative safety of Perth, only to be involved in a near-fatal car crash just after Christmas. But now... Paul and Danica were securing the family's future. He kissed me goodbye and hugged me, and of course he'd hugged the boys. And Lincoln, um, as he was walking, he turned around, Lincoln screamed out, I love you. And he blew us a kiss and walked out the door, and that was it. That was the last, the last I could see it. I, that picture is forever in my brain. And 
I left there and of course just cried the whole way up with my sunglasses on. Um, so I wasn't so tough in front of Lincoln the whole way. I sort of turned up the music and cried all the way to soccer. Aboard flight 370, everything is normal as it flies northeast towards Vietnam. Now it's a lovely night outside and inside I suppose most passengers are wanting to have a sleep. I mean at one o'clock in the morning who wants to have a meal and a lot of people will be saying look don't bother me again I'm putting my eye shades on I'm tightening my seat belt putting a blanket over my shoulders and I'm going to sleep. For Kathy and Bob Lawton traveling with best friends Rod and Mary Burrows this was a bittersweet trip. Kathy was losing her eyesight due to glaucoma and they'd embarked on this five-week holiday to Malaysia and China before her sight went completely. My last words to both of them, I gave them a kiss each and just said be safe and look forward to seeing them. Amanda Lawton is Kathy and Bob's daughter. Jeanette Maguire is Kathy's sister. But she was very, very nervous actually about that flight. She kept asking everybody, how safe was this Malaysian Airlines? She didn't know enough about them. Um, we all just said they're great, you know, worldwide, state of the art. Do you think she might have intuited something? I, I think so. Um, pretty much from, a, from about November last year, she was going on and about how she's been having all these bad dreams, nightmares. Um, and we're just like, Mum, you're being silly, you're just being a worry ward. <laughs> The aircraft, the 777-200, should any doubt now attach to that plane? I haven't got any doubt about the engineering integrity of the 777. It's a beautiful aeroplane. It has a fantastic record in service. They just don't go wrong in a way which would cause the aeroplane to disappear. They just don't. But Flight 370 is just minutes away from disappearing. 19 minutes past one, everything seems fine in the cockpit. There should now be a changeover from Malaysian airspace to Vietnamese. The co-pilot, 27-year-old Farik Hamid, makes what will be the final communication from the plane. He radios Malaysian control. All right, good night. But never makes a follow-up to Vietnamese control. So his last transmission could perhaps be interpreted as a final goodbye from a suicidal pilot. Basically, the aircraft is approaching the airspace boundary between the two states. And there's a fairly simple handover at that point. So the good night isn't some doom-laden suicidal message. There's no way that good night was goodbye forever. You cannot read that into it. It was going to be good night, Malaysia, good morning, Vietnam. I mean, it's two human beings talking to each other. Why not say good night? Then at 1.21 a.m., Flight 370 mysteriously vanishes. All of a sudden, air traffic controllers in both Vietnam and in Malaysia suddenly can't see the aeroplane any longer. The controllers can suddenly see nothing. On board Flight 370, something, or more probably someone, has switched off the aircraft's transponder, which relays its position and call sign to air traffic control. It's quite a clever tactic. This is if it was deliberate. It's quite a clever tactic to switch off the transponder just as responsibility is being transferred from one air traffic control center to another. Then minutes later, something or again someone disables the aircraft's only other active transmission system called ACARS, which uses satellites to relay messages from the plane back to base and vice versa. There are only two things which could disable the ACARS, and one is that it could have been switched off deliberately by somebody on the aircraft, or otherwise something happened to deprive um, the aircraft of power which would have switched other things off as well. So uh, it was either deprived of power accidentally, we don't have any evidence for that, 
or it was deprived of power by literally being switched off deliberately. This is where the confounding mystery of Flight 370 begins. The transponder and the ACAR system were switched off. There is no mayday call from the pilot. There was no further communication from the cockpit whatsoever. Whatever happens from this point on would seem to be catastrophic, but we may never know. Flight 370 is due to land. The arrival board reads, delayed. The truth is, Malaysian Flight 370 is missing. We are working with authorities to locate the aircraft. Malaysian Airlines know it. Air traffic controllers know it. I mean, aircraft don't get lost, but it's not there. Air traffic controllers said they haven't even seen it, heard from it yet. The relatives and friends are the there. The relatives and friends, what are we going to tell them? Well, we don't have anything to tell them. I mean, what more can you do? They can't say, it's gone missing. An hour after it fails to arrive in Beijing, authorities admit Flight 370 is missing. The last transmission from the aircraft was at 0107, which indicated that everything was normal. And in Brisbane, Jeanette and Amanda get the worst news imaginable. When did you start to give up hope? Didn't. There's always hope. We just couldn't understand, you know, how does a plane go missing in 2014? It's... It, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But at this stage, no one doubted that Flight 370 had crashed into the South China Sea. In Perth, Danica is at home. She's called by a reporter. She simply said, there's been an incident with the plane. And I, um, I, um, I just ran out. I didn't know what to do. I just, I just ran out. Oh, I just dropped the phone. My mum was there. I just dropped the phone. I just ran out into the, the backyard screaming. I couldn't, I couldn't. I did, as anyone's brain, I instantly thought the plane's crashed. And I, I didn't know that was just too much to take. And I... I just dropped the plane, the, the phone and I said, Mum, you're just going to have to talk. I just can't, I can't. And she's like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And um, I just ran out to the backyard and I started screaming, started screaming and uh, just overwhelmed, not believing it. And I, I just, from that point, um, his brother and mother came down and he just, he looked at the, the his itinerary and he walked through the, he walked through the hall and he just, just shook his head and said, it's his plane. <laughs> Danica, like everyone, assumes a plane has crashed somewhere near its last known location. But no one could believe where it had actually gone. We're looking at a highly unlikely total event. An aircraft just disappears off the planet, OK? Flight 370 had dramatically changed course and was picked up on three of Malaysia's military radar tracking stations. It is now an unidentified aircraft heading towards one of the country's major cities, Penang. At uh, 1.22 precisely, Malaysian radar, military radar, detects a plane changing course. What's happening now? The military should react to that and they say, an unidentified aircraft is approaching our territory, we should identify it by sending up an F-15, for example. That's what they should have done, but they didn't do it. However, our main effort has always been in the South China Sea. With that blunder, Malaysia had lost a chance to discover where Flight 370 was heading and what had happened to it. Coming up... That's the stall warning. The final moments of Flight 370. And you can see how fast we're going down on the altimeter. How the families learn the worst. And that none of those on board survived. And what experts think really happened in the cockpit. It's not only the perfect suicide, it's the perfect crime. That's next on 60 Minutes. The early morning of Saturday, the 8th of March. 
Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 out of Kuala Lumpur bound for Beijing has vanished from air traffic control radar with 239 passengers and crew. Among them, Australians Kathy and Bob Lawton travelling with best friends Rod and Mary Burrows. Also from Perth, mining engineer Paul Wicks. I thought, no, this can't be, this has got to be a hoax. This has got to be just some sick hoax. The world assumes Flight 370 has crashed near its last known position. The truth will make this flight the world's greatest aviation mystery. Flight 370 was still flying, but where on earth was it going? A final concrete clue provided an answer of sorts. A satellite picked up hourly traces of the aircraft, proving the plane was still intact and its systems were operating. For the next seven hours, it flies on on the same heading in radio silence before presumably running out of fuel and crashing into the ocean below. But the world had no idea that Flight 370's final flight path put it thousands of kilometres southwest of its last communication point. Desperate loved ones like Danica Weeks followed a search that for nearly a week was spent looking in the wrong ocean. By the time the massive sea and air search turned its attention to the southern Indian Ocean, there was precious little left to find. 18 days passed with only inconclusive satellite sightings of possible wreckage. You can't give up. You can't give up uh, until you have that. 18 days is a long time to go through that. That was, it's agonising every day, just having no finality, no answers. In this Boeing 777 flight simulator, with pilot Richard Zanfleet, we recreated what were almost certainly the final moments of flight MH370. It's as close as that we can actually make it. It feels real to me. Uh, we've got the uh, engine controls here. This is, shows us all the fuel here. These are our flight. At 35,000 feet, the engines fail, their fuel exhausted, and the aircraft goes into a stall. Stalling, that's the so, stall warning. That's the stick shakers coming in. The and watch our stalled. altitude, 30,000. Yeah, we're going down. 26,000. It's just something you'd never want to hear in oh, real no. life. No. And you can see how fast we're going down on the altimeter. 20 degrees nose up. We've got some speed, but not a speed this way, but a speed down. 15,000, 14,000. This is terrible. And in a minute, the end will come. 12,000. 12, we're falling fast, aren't we? What kind of rate are we falling at? 26,000 feet a minute. 7,000. 6,000. 5,000. 4. 3. 2. The end. You would hope that the poor souls who went through that didn't know about it. His sons and me would have been the people he was thinking about as he went down. Um, so I take some comfort in that, that if that's how it happened, he would have been thinking of us in his last moments. Finally, after nearly three weeks of searching without a single piece of the aircraft being recovered, Malaysian Airlines are forced to admit the worst. Light MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. Some families are told in the worst possible way. Malaysia Airlines deeply regrets that we have to assume beyond reasonable doubt that MH370 has been lost and that none of those aboard survived. As you'll hear in the next hour from the Malaysian Prime Minister, we must accept all evidence suggests the plane went down. 
and the Southern Indian Ocean. How did you handle that when you read that? I didn't, I, did, I didn't handle it. Hysterical, obviously. Just sickened, sickened that someone would actually send me a text message to say that my loved one was dead. And this is my husband, my loving husband, father of my children, and you sent me a text message. While Danika is reading this, more arrives from Malaysian Airlines. Another text message. Another text message just received right now. A press conference will be held at 12.30 p.m. Malaysian local time today, 25th of March 2014. Tune in to watch the news report. We're in the same time zone, that's half an hour's time. Yes. Yeah. This is a sad and tragic day for all of us at Malaysia Alliance. This news is clearly devastating for the families of those on board. There is no reporting that can describe sharing the pain of anguish like this when the finality of Paul's death hits home. We do not know why. We do not know how this terrible tragedy happened. In Brisbane, Amanda Lawton and Jeanette Maguire are also struggling with the terrible truth. The loss of a mother, a father, a sister. What do you think happened? My personal thoughts, you've got to make your own ending until you know the ending. For that, I want a peaceful one. And for me, there's something that has gone wrong. They've all gone to sleep, they know nothing. And that's what I want to live with. But while the relatives of all 239 on board Flight 370 know their loved ones have been killed, what they don't know is how or why. Is this the greatest aviation mystery? This is the real whodunit. A plane that cost $250 million, flown by experienced pilots, leaves KL to go to Beijing on a simple six-hour flight, and they wind up in the drink 2,000 miles west of Perth. I mean, what the hell is this all about? I mean, Professor Joe Syracuse is an expert in counterterrorism at Melbourne's RMIT. He is certain that flight MH370 was deliberately brought down by Captain Zahari Ahmad, who is now the focus of investigations. So the captain, he deactivates the depressurization and he deactivates the warning system. He takes people to 42,000 feet, which takes about three minutes, and within nine to 15 seconds, every passenger on that plane is technically dead. They're brain dead. Nine to 15 seconds before they're rendered brain dead. They're just dead. So he's got a dead plane. See, the, 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 the guy who's going to commit suicide, he, he wants to make sure that no one can rush the door. So he gets rid of these people, and then he turns left, goes from 42,000 feet to descent of uh, 12,000 feet, which is standard, and it looks like he's turning back to KL. And then he turns left again down the Strait of Malacca on his way to the Indian Ocean. So why is he going to drop the plane in the Indian Ocean? He's going to drop it in the deepest part of the world. That place is three miles deep. No one's going to get that stuff. So I'd say it's not only the perfect suicide, it's the perfect crime. Air safety expert David Learmount agrees that this was no accident. This was a deliberate act by somebody. I don't know who it was. I don't know whether it was the crew or whether the crew ended up acting under coercion. I don't know. But, but the, there is no evidence None, zero, zilch, nada, no evidence for any other theory. There is no evidence of fire. There is no evidence of decompression, whereas there is circumstantial evidence of deliberate action. A wild afternoon on a Perth beach, just a taste of the near impossible search conditions. That's a hell of a blow now. Coming straight out of the southwest, what, 40, 50 knots of wind? No wonder. No wonder they can't search 2,000 kilometres out there. What must it be like? Oh, it's, it'll be impossible. It's horrible. It's extraordinary. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure it just feels, feels just so haunting to be here. Um, just to see the sea and and think that um, you know, that's where he ended up. Very In that deep, happened. deep, deep watery wilderness way out there, 2,000 kilometres out there, they need to find the black box. 
and, and for your how and why to be answered. Absolutely, and time's running out for that. I don't think we will ever see the significant parts of that wreckage. Only, we'll only get the floating stuff. I don't think we'll ever see either the black boxes or anything else. We will only recover what floats. And without that black box, we'll never know for sure. Mm. You want that box to be found, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. At whatever expense? Absolutely, you, you need to have that definitive answer. And to not ever know, I think, is just that would just be a horrible thing to have to live with. How do you live with the possibility that you might never know? It's hard. I, I'm still struggling with the fact that they've gone. I... Mm. Without that final answer, Danica will be condemned to live a life of not knowing what happened to her husband and with two boys who will never know their father. Whether we go out early or later in life, we all live on through our children, don't we? Absolutely. It's one of the few pieces of wisdom I've learned. He'll always be here with you because of those little blokes. Oh, completely and completely. Look, Lincoln is just, it's, it's such his personality and, and Jack is, is just the spitting image of him. And that's it, that's what Paul always said, that um, any achievement, they were his greatest achievements. Mm, yeah. um, that's the hardest part, because you know you can't bring Dad back for him. Mm. And that's not, that's not. Hello, I'm Charles Woolley. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.